In this video, I'm going to be talking about what I do when I find that I'm not using certain art supplies and why imposing some constraints or limitations on the art supplies or the colours you're using can actually result in more artistic freedom. Over the past couple of years, I've bought three of these Agello watercolour palettes. Agello are a handmade watercolour manufacturer in Italy and they're absolutely gorgeous paints. I love them, I love using them, but I found that I wasn't using these palettes enough. I don't want to have art supplies that just sit there in the studio unused. So I've been gradually, over the past few months, going through all of my art supplies and editing them down to only the colours or the materials I know I'm going to use. So as I usually do when I decide to edit down my art supplies, deciding which ones to keep and which ones to sell or give away, I swatch each colour individually. These are just rough swatches, just so I can look at the colours with fresh eyes and see which ones I think I'm really going to use and in this case, which ones are going to be included in a specially curated palette that I'm going to put together with all of my favourite Agallo colours. So after swatching the greens palette, I went through each colour and gave a cross, which meant it definitely wasn't going in the new palette, a tick, which means it definitely was, and a question mark when I was undecided. Those ones will be decided upon later. So here I'm swatching the greens that made the cut and I'm just doing slightly larger swatches to see what they look like in a wash as well. And I also wanted to see how they looked together. I want this to be a functional palette. It's going to be quite a limited palette, but I want it to be something that inspires me when I look at it and something that I'm going to reach for regularly. Whereas these palettes at the moment, as much as I love them, I just found that they weren't working for me or my style of painting. The past couple of years have been a time of real experimentation for me, where I've allowed myself to invest in many different art supplies. But as I go along, I'm really refining my colour palette, my style, and I now know what I really like and what I'm going to use. I thought it would be easier to work out which green paints were going into the palette first. And I noticed that the Naturale One palette had three greens. So I thought I would swatch those next and decide whether all of those were going to go into the new palette. One of them is actually, I think it's called Slate Grey, but it definitely leans towards green. So for the purpose of this palette, we're going to call it a green. I decided that all of them were going to be included and then I moved on to swatching the blue palette. I remember last year when I bought the blue and green palettes, I was really excited about them. I tend to love groups of colours, like the same colour together and the variation in the greens and in the blues was just really inspiring to me. But what I hadn't thought about was that I just don't tend to use some of these colours in my work. I also think this coincided with a phase last spring when I was trying to move into using brighter colours. I'd made some spring inspired artwork that had used slightly brighter colours and so I thought maybe I was moving more into that direction. But as the year went on, I reverted back to the colours that I love and that I feel give my work the unique character that it has. I think it's great to try new things in your art, but sometimes when you're pushing it a little bit too hard, your art can start to lose the special quality that it had in the first place, the thing that makes it uniquely yours. And I find when I use brighter colours in my work, this is what happens. This is not to say that I don't have an appreciation for brighter colours. You can appreciate something whilst at the same time knowing that it's not quite right for you. Over the past few months, I've noticed something interesting happening. I seem to have become overwhelmed by choice. Now, you would think that having a lot of choice of art supplies or colours would be liberating. But it's strange. It actually has the opposite effect. 
it can make me feel unsure of which palette to reach for. And sometimes I end up sitting there almost paralysed because I don't know which one to choose. There's just so much choice and how do you narrow it down? Well, one thing I've found helpful is to get rid of all of the colours that I'm just not using or that don't inspire me. So I've been doing this with all of my art supplies, whether that's inks, coloured pencils, watercolours, acrylic paints, gouache, acrylic gouache, neo colours, absolutely everything. I've gradually been going through my entire stash of art supplies, firstly swatching all of the colours and then gradually editing them down. Firstly, I'll take out the ones that I really know that I'm not using. And then I take out the ones that I'm looking at with fresh eyes, but they're not really inspiring me. And I know that I'm probably not going to use them. So these all go into one pile and then I swatch what I have left. If they work together as a cohesive palette, I then keep all of those colours and they're the colours I'll be working with in the future. This means that I'm not hoarding or holding on to colours that I'm not going to use and they can go off to a new home where they'll be loved and used, which after all is what art supplies are made for. There's somehow something inspiring about doing this. I don't know exactly why this is, but it does make you look at the supplies you have with fresh eyes. So here I'm just finalising the palette and I realised that I could fit 17 colours into one of these little palettes if I used the section in the middle. So I attached blue tack to the bottom of five of the pans of watercolour and squeezed some extras in there. So I've made a beautiful palette full of gorgeous greens, blues and earth tones. So here's my new palette and if you see any colours you like, please feel free to pause the video, take a screenshot or maybe jot them down in your notebook. I also decided to swatch them as botanical swatches too, just to really see how they look together.
I'm now going to work on a painting inspired by a prompt from the Woodland Art Challenge on my Patreon. I've challenged myself to use just this palette of colours that I've put together and one white gouache paint. I'm using the Windsor & Newton Designer's Gouache in permanent white to add to some of the colours in this palette when I want to layer over the top and make a more opaque colour. I hope that you enjoy watching the process of this painting and I also hope that you enjoyed the video or perhaps found it useful or inspiring in some way. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up as this really helps my channel to reach a wider audience. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you again soon in another video.